Hello everyone, uh, let's get started. So yesterday we looked at Cartesian coordinates and polar coordinates and how we could convert from one to the other uh, using those coordinate transformations. So remember what we did. If we're given polar coordinates, we can convert to Cartesian using x is equal to r cos theta and y is equal to r sine theta. Okay, so that's given polar, we can convert to Cartesian. Um, on the other hand, if we're given Cartesian and we want to go to polar, we can say r is equal to square root x squared plus y squared and theta is going to be octan of y over x. Okay, so we derived those last time. So this is for a single point. So given a single point in the space, we can convert between these two. Now we're going to look at how can we look at curves in Cartesian and polar coordinates. Okay, so we're going to start off with a simple example. So just an example. So let's say we have the curve in Cartesian coordinates, which is given by y equals one over x, and we're only gonna look at positive x. Okay, so um, we know what this looks like, the hyperbola. Okay, but we're going to try convert it into polar coordinates and then sketch it using that. Okay, but we know what the result should be, okay, because we know what y over x looks like. Okay, so we're gonna to convert to polar. So y is given by r sine theta r sine theta, and x is r cos theta, so it's one over r cos theta. We can multiply the r cos theta to the other side. So we're gonna get r squared sine theta cos theta is equal to one. Okay, now the sine theta and cos theta, we can leave it separate, uh, or we could combine it into a single term uh, where that will be one half sine two theta. So we're gonna do that. R squared one half sine two theta is equal to one. And then finally, we can take the stuff across and then take the square root. So R squared is going to be two over sine two theta. We can take the square root. So R is equal to square root two over sine two theta. Okay, so this is what the curve looks like in polar coordinates. So we could write it as r as a function of theta, the square root two over sine two theta. Okay, so that's what the curve looks like. Well, that's what the function looks like. So what we're going to do now is try and plot this uh, using polar coordinates to see if we get the same result as if we plotted y equals one over x. Okay, so the way we do that is we look at our function, we've got sine two theta. Okay, so let's plot what sine two theta looks like, and that will give us an idea of how the radial distance changes as a function of theta. Okay, because remember, we're gonna go from theta being zero all the way to two pi, and we're gonna measure the radial distance, and then that will give us our curve. Okay, so to start, let's see what this looks like. So quick little plot here with theta, sine two theta. Okay, so we're just trying to see what these inputs are gonna look like. Uh, so it's sine two theta, which means there's two cycles between zero and two pi, which means there's one cycle between zero and pi. So if I have zero pi over two and pi, that means there's gonna be one cycle. So we can draw it like this. Okay, something like that. Now we're only interested in positive x. Okay, so if we draw our plot here, so x and y, we're only interested in positive x. So that means this part over here. So if we look at this part in terms of polar coordinates, what does that mean? 
Well, we know that this line, the horizontal line here, that's zero radians. Over here is pi over two radians. And if we go back the other way, that's going to be minus pi over two. So x being positive means that we're only looking at angles from minus pi over two to pi over two. Okay, so, um, but we're not going to look at minus pi over two to zero because we know that this curve only exists in this top portion. Okay, so for now, we're just going to look at from zero to pi over two just to make it simpler. Uh, but later on, we'll look at the full zero to two pi. Okay, so let's just look at zero to pi over two for now. So that means we're looking at this section over here. Okay, so we know given a theta value, we know what sine two theta is going to be. Okay, which is going to be our input over there. Okay, so let's have a look at the different values. So when theta is equal to zero, what is the value of R going to be? So when theta is equal to zero, R is going to be equal to, okay, so theta is zero, which means sine two theta is zero. And in this expression for R of theta, we're gonna have two over zero. Now, when we divide by zero, we know that the answer goes to infinity. So in fact, when theta is zero, R goes to infinity. Okay, uh, what about pi over four? That's somewhere in between, uh, halfway between zero and pi over two. So when theta is pi over four, that means sine two theta is going to be sine of pi over two, because two times pi over four is pi over two. So the denominator is going to be one. And so R is going to be root two. Okay, and let's look at the last value when theta is pi over two. What do we have for uh, sine? So sine two times pi over two, the sine of pi. Sine of pi is zero. So again, we're dividing by zero. So R is going to go to infinity again. Okay, so these are just some sample points that we're going to use uh, to sketch this function in polar coordinates. Okay, so let's have a look at that. So we're going to draw our polar coordinate plot. So we know on the right hand side, that's going to be zero radians. At the top is going to be pi over two, then pi, then three pi over two. Okay, and halfway between here, I'm just going to do a dotted line. That's going to be pi over four. Yeah, you can draw more uh, angles if you want, but we only took three sample points, so we only need uh, these three on the right here. Okay, so when theta is zero, R goes to infinity. So uh, let's just put that in blue here. At zero, R is all the way. You can think of this point as going out to infinity. Yeah, now we increase our angle, so we're moving counterclockwise around to pi over four. When theta is pi over four, R is going to be the square root of two. So at this pi over four line, we're gonna have a point over here at a distance root two away. Root two away over there. And remember this point was infin infinitely far away there. Okay, and then at pi over two, R also goes to infinity. So if we can draw that out here, okay, that also means, sorry, um, let's make a bit more space here. Okay, we also have a point out here at infinity. Okay, so what we do now is we just connect the dots. Of course, you could have more angles to give you more dots, but this should be enough. So let's put that in red. When R is uh, going to infinity, we're gonna come out like this. We're gonna pass through the point here, and then we're gonna go off back to infinity there. So it's gonna be something like that. So you see that we sketched this using polar coordinates, 
and we got the same result as using Cartesian. Okay, so this was sketched using polar coordinates and we got the same result. So that was just a, a simple example of sketching using polar coordinates. So what you would need to do is break up your zero to two pi into a bunch of sample points. So here we only did from zero to pi over two, we broke it up into three sample points and we looked at the radial distance for each of those points. So when theta is zero, we got infinite distance. When theta was pi over four, we got a distance of root two. When theta was pi over two, we got a distance of infinity again, and then we just connect the points together. And that gives us our R of theta curve. Okay, so for each input theta, we get a distance R. Okay, so that's the first example. Now for this example, we started off with Y equals one over X, okay, just so that we had an idea of what we were trying to do. For this next example, we're going to start straight with a function of theta, and then we're going to work backwards to see what the Cartesian form looks like. Okay, to see if we got it right. So example two. Okay, let's say R of theta is sine theta. Okay, so it looks simpler than what we had before. So let's just see what we can do with this. So on the side, we're going to just sketch the sine theta graph, okay, just to see how the R changes. So we're going to have here theta and sine theta. Now, this is going to have the full period of uh, two pi, unlike the previous one where it was from zero to pi. So here it's going to go like this, zero, pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and two pi. Okay, so these are going to be our inputs, and then R, that's going to be this output um, sine of theta. Okay, so uh, let's break up um, our angle into these one, two, three, four, five sample points. Okay, just to see what happens. Okay, so on the right, we're gonna have zero. Then we have pi over two, pi, three pi over two, and we end up back at two pi. Okay, and then you can do your pi over four line if you want to do that as well. That's gonna be somewhere along here, that would be pi over four, if you want to put more sample points uh, going around. Okay, uh, but let's see what we get. So when theta is equal to zero, sine of theta is gonna be zero, so R is going to be zero. Uh, sorry, zero, so R is zero. When theta is pi over two, oh, let's do pi over four, let's put that as an extra sample point. When theta is pi over four, we're gonna have sine theta is one over root two. So R is gonna be one over root two. Okay, when theta is pi over two, sine theta is going to be one. So R is going to be one. When theta is pi, sine of theta is zero. So R is zero. And when theta is pi, uh, three pi over two, okay, um, R is going to be, uh, sorry, sine theta is going to be negative one. So R is going to be negative one, but I'm just going to put a star here because remember last time I said distances can't be negative. So there's a little thing that we have to do um, if we do get a negative value. Okay, there's a, a little trick we have to do. Okay, and lastly, when theta is two pi, what happens? Okay, so if theta is two pi, 
sine of theta is zero, so r is going to be zero. Okay, so we have, sorry, that's a zero. Okay, so we've got our collection of sample points, and we're going to use that to see what this looks like in Cartesian, uh, sorry, in polar coordinates. Okay, and we just sketched the, so we just plot some of these points, we connect the dots, and that gives us our uh, full shape. Okay, so let's start. When theta is zero, r is zero. So theta being zero, that means we're on this right-hand side line. Okay, that's the theta equals zero line. And r is zero. So a distance of zero means we're at the origin. So that is point number one. So let's just label that there. Okay. Uh, when theta is pi over four, r is going to be one over root two. Okay, now, one over root two, um, if you want to write that um, approximately, this is uh, 0.71, rough, roughly 0.71. So that's going to be somewhere, let's say, over here. So that's point two. And this distance here, that is roughly 0 0.71. Okay, uh, when theta is pi over two, r is equal to one. So that's a bit bigger than 0 0.71. So it's gonna be a bit further out. So let's say somewhere here. So that's gonna be three. And this distance is one. Okay, so we've done point two, we've done point three. Uh, point four, when theta is par, r is zero. So we're back at the beginning. Okay. And of course, you could put this other line in. So maybe for homework, you want to check this um, angle out here. Over here, we would also get a point uh, over here at 0 0.71. Okay, just because of the, the symmetry. So you would get another point over there. Okay, R goes back to zero. When theta is three pi over two, R is negative one. Now, like I said last time, you can't get a negative distance value. But what we do in that case is we look at this line three pi over two going down. Okay, so we're over here. A negative value for R just means we go in the opposite direction. So if we have a positive R value, we would go radially outwards this way, okay, along that angle line going down. But since R is negative one, we go in the opposite direction. So we actually measure opposite to that angle. So we would end up back at this point that we had here at the top. So let's just put that down as a note. If R is less than zero, then we measure that distance in the opposite direction. Okay, so just as a little example to go with the note, if r of zero is negative one, how would we draw that? Okay, again, here, here's zero, here's pi over two, here's par. So r of zero is negative one. We should be drawing in this direction because that is the zero angle direction. But instead we flip around and we draw in this other direction so our point will be somewhere here. Okay. So instead of drawing in the zero direction, R is negative. So we flip over and we draw in the opposite direction. So that gives us this point on the other side. Okay. So please just keep that in mind when you're sketching. Whenever R is negative for whatever reason, and you want to draw that point, that sample point, you look at the angle 
um, that gives you the negative distance, you flip over it into the opposite direction and you put your point there. So instead of putting your point there, you flip over and you draw it on the other side. Okay, and then the same thing works for other angles. So let's just say R of pi over four is negative two and we want to plot that. So pi over four is along this line. Okay, so we should be going along this pi over four line somewhere there, but we flip over to the other direction and we put our point here. Okay, at whatever the positive distance is. So this distance is now two. This distance there would be one. Okay, so whenever R is negative, you just flip over to the other direction and then put your point there. Okay, so that's what we do here. So if we connect these points, uh, what kind of shape do we get? Well, it's gonna end up being something like this. Let's put it in green. So we started at zero, we went to 0 0.71, we ended up at pi over, uh, at one, when theta was pi over two, we went back down to there, back to zero, okay? and then we did another loop because it goes negative one, zero, so uh, we do this loop again. Okay, so we've got two loops going around. So we end up with some kind of circle uh, that's touching the x-axis there. Okay, let's see what this looks like in Cartesian coordinates to see if we were on the right track or not. Okay, so just as an um, side. What does this curve look like? in Cartesian coordinates. Okay, so we're more familiar with what Cartesian curves look like. So let's convert this r equals sine theta to Cartesian and see what we can get from there. Okay, so what does this curve look like in Cartesian coordinates? Okay, so let's start. So r is equal to sine theta. Now we want to convert this into Cartesian. Uh, remember that r is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. It would be nice to not have the square root. So if we could work with r squared, that would be quite nice. So let's replace, uh, not replace, let's square both sides so that the r becomes r squared. Okay, so r squared is equal to sine squared theta. Okay, I've just squared um, both sides there. Now, r squared is going to be x squared plus y squared. Okay, good. Uh, what about sine theta? What is that going to become? Well, we know that r sine theta is equal to y. So sine theta is equal to y over r. Uh, r is the square root of x squared plus y squared. So that's going to be y over x squared plus y squared square root. Okay, so that's how we can rewrite sine theta using Cartesian form. Uh, but we've got sine squared, so we can write this as y squared over x squared plus y squared. Okay. Uh, now we can take this x squared plus y squared to the other side. So we're gonna have x squared plus y squared squared is equal to y squared. Uh, we've got a square on both sides, we can get rid of that. So we're gonna have x squared plus y squared is equal to y. Okay, it looks a bit funny, uh, but let's take the y over to the other side and then try and complete the square. Okay, because it's looking kind of like a circle, uh, but not quite. So just a little note. 
looks kind of like a circle. But not quite. Okay, so that gives us the motivation to try and complete the square with y. So we're going to have x squared plus y squared minus y is equal to zero. Okay, it's almost like that circle equation. So let's complete the square with y. We're going to have x squared plus y minus a half squared. Okay, so if we expand this out, we're going to get uh, y squared minus y plus a quarter. Okay, but we don't want that plus a quarter because we never had that in the previous line. So we need to minus a quarter. Okay, and then finally, we can write x squared plus y minus a half squared is equal to a half squared. So this is a circle with radius a half shifted up by a half. So this is a circle with radius equal a half and shifted up from the origin by a half because we've got this shifting on y. Okay, so that's what we should get. Uh, if, if we look at this in the Cartesian form, which is more familiar to us. Uh, let's have a look at our picture again. Oh, there we go. That looks just like it. So it's supposed to be a circle with radius one half shifted up by one half. But remember, the full diameter of this was one. So if we look at the center of the circle, that's going to be somewhere over here. The center point is going to be at zero, one half, because the full diameter is one, so the center point must be at a half. And again, if the diameter is one, that means this radius here is one half. So yeah, so our picture does match uh, what the Cartesian form looks like. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so let's put some homework down. Okay, so it's going to be in two parts. Number one, uh, sketch r of theta is equal to cos theta. Okay, so we do the same thing as before. Um, you find your sample points, however many you need to, to do an accurate sketch. Find your sample points, plot the sample points, and then connect the dots and see what you get. And number two, uh, validate your sketch by finding the Cartesian form. Uh, like we did over here. So we got the circle equation and we saw that our original plot matched the circle equation. So over here, we're also going to get a circle. Okay, just a little spoiler with that. So we're going to get a circle. Uh, however, it's going to be a different kind of shape. Okay, it's going to be moved around differently. Okay, so try and sketch it first, then see what the Cartesian form is and see if it matches up. Okay, so that's going to be the homework for today. So on Monday, we're going to carry on with some of these uh, simple plots. And then we're going to move on to a special kind of uh, graph or sketch or curve, um, whatever you want to call it. Um, and those are the conic sections. Okay, so that comes a bit later um, after the sketching. Okay, um, any questions about what we've done today? Okay, uh, any questions about the homework? Okay, so just a little bit of uh, advice when you are sketching this, uh, use a lot of sample points. Okay, just, you know, for the first couple of times when doing these problems, 
So over here, I used uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, six sample points, maybe use like eight. Okay, so you've got a lot of points to connect up. So um, trial plot this using eight sample points. And then later on, when you do more and more examples, uh, you get the idea of how to do it. And then you can use less sample points then. Okay, but for now, maybe trial with eight sample points. Okay, and then later on, um, you can use less. Okay, so um, that's it for today. Uh, we'll carry on on Monday. And then the tutorial quiz um, on Tuesday is going to be up to uh, this plotting over here. Okay, so uh, I'll give you something like R equals uh, cos two theta plus one, for example, uh, you have to plot that. Okay, so it won't be on the conic sections. Uh, so we'll, we'll do the conic sections on Monday, but that won't be in the tutorial test. It will be just on the stuff uh, that we've been doing here. Okay, uh, if you do have any questions, please let me know on the WhatsApp group, or you can send me an email. Um, and also remember the tutors are available on the group as well. Okay, if you need some help with, um, with plotting these. Okay, bye everyone, and I'll see you Monday.